So I've been thinking, right? You, hear me out, hear me out. This red is gorgeous, right? We, we can't argue that, it looks really good. However, I've went ahead, obviously the bumper's aftermarket, this nose panel's aftermarket, and this is where it really bugs me. You can really tell the difference here in the colors, and for some odd reason, the paint match that I got was not obviously the correct. So. This is one reason as to why I'm going to be probably doing as to what I'm going to be doing. If you guys uh, missed the one episode where I mentioned that some guy came out here and did a paintless dent repair. So basically all the dents that were on this car were removed. And that was major. I mean, it, this car, it, it, it looks brand new. So yes, you know, the paint isn't great in every spot. You know, it's got like some fading right here. Someone buffed through the clear coat or something along those lines. And uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's, it's a 30 year old car. Let's be real here. Ah, as much as I wanna keep this red, I don't think I'm gonna, at least not right now. So my plan is to go ahead and wrap it like a gloss white. I was thinking of pearl, like the same color that I wrapped my Lexus, the IS300, but I, I don't know if that will really work out too well with the white wheel. So I actually wanna try and do the white on white thing. I think it'll look really clean and uh, it's just something a little bit different. So obviously we can always go ahead and repaint my wheels. So what I did with these wheels really quick, I actually painted the barrels black, and that is a really key touch. Shout out to the homie Heavy D for, uh, he came up with that idea way back in the day. Black barrels, white faces, it really makes the white pop. And personally, with white wheels, I do not like them unless they do have black barrels because then you can see all the dirt and the grime. And it just really off puts the wheel, it makes it look really dirty. Also, another episode, I think it was last episode, I also mentioned that we're, we're probably gonna be grabbing a paint booth here, like a crazy, huge, like full out industrial size killer paint booth. So that, this, this will probably end up getting repainted in the same color. So this car is actually that color. Blue is great, but I really would like to go ahead and repaint this thing in the red. This car is gonna be white on white. I'm very, I think it's gonna look so damn clean. Like, I, I don't know, I'm really stoked on it. So we'll go ahead and vinyl wrap this. I would love to paint it, but again, you know, that's just a lot of work. This car is my daily, so as I'm wrapping it, you know, I'll be also driving it. So the nice part is I can wrap a panel, continue driving it, it's not gonna really be a problem. I think it looks sick. Let me know what you guys think. I know some, pe some people won't be about it, but I think the, the whole white on white with the black accents, and the red accents here and there are gonna look really good. I've wanted to wrap this thing white for a while. Ask anyone, if you guys have been with me on the channel, you guys would have known that white was, was pretty much the plan from the get-go, so I'm stoked. But today, today we are, man, this is, today's episode is major. Like this is something that should have been done probably at least a year ago. <laughs> Ever since I did this swap, I should have probably done this right off the bat. So. If you guys are wondering what the hell we're looking at, this is a Dakota Digital SGI 100 Bluetooth box. You can have this thing output, you know, a signal to your RPM gauge, and you can also have it put out a speed signal. So I'm sure you guys already know where the hell we're going with this. So this is their newest uh, module. I'll actually have the link in the description. This is not sponsored. I paid full price for this. This is something you guys are going to need if you want to, if you have a swapped car or the calibration just might be wrong. Hey, even you guys don't have a swapped car, if you just have a lifted truck with massive tires on it, you know, you want your, your speed to read correctly, you'll, you'll go ahead and grab this little guy right here. So this is about $85. I will have the link down below if you guys wanna go ahead and grab it. They do have a app for iOS and Android that actually will allow you to calibrate this and set it up. So I'm not entirely too sure how that works, but it seems like it should be pretty easy. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do guys is take you along this journey. Let's get this thing. Uh, the car hasn't had a Speedo in like over a year. You know, ever since I swapped the 2J in it, it has a 2J with a CD09. I know some of you are probably new. We've been getting some, gaining some subscribers uh, left and right lately, so I appreciate y'all. But uh, you know, that is, that is what we're working with, with right there. So did all the work myself full engine bay shave. You guys know the deal. It's an epic car. So uh, it's about to actually get torn down and completely rebuilt. So very excited about that. All right, so obviously point of view, I figured this would be the easiest way to go about things. So first thing I wanna go ahead and do is just kind of figure out where I'm gonna go ahead and mount this thing. I don't really know as far as like if I want to go ahead and hide it completely and not really be able to go ahead and interact with it. I, I don't want to just chuck it underneath my dash either. So I do want to mount it. So here's what I'm thinking. I think I'm going to go ahead and put it in my center console. So you guys can see we have a, a good amount of space in here and I think I'm going to go ahead and mount it back here. Son of a... Don't, don't mind, don't mind all this. We'll, you know, we'll deal with that later. Oh, by the way, 240 fuse box harness, coming along great. I'll have an update for you guys very, very soon. We should be able to install that thing 
um, hopefully tomorrow back in the vehicle. So that's, that's awesome. What a mission, dude. Okay, right. Okay, there we have it. Use this little little squeegee as a spacer so we have room for the wires to come out. Now the only thing left to do is to drill a hole here in the corner. All right, so this is where I'm at. Obviously we got it mounted, got my harness kind of routed in the back there, all shielded up, and then if we flip it over, this is what we got. So these two wires are, beginning, are gonna be going to our sensor. Obviously braided everything all together, just taped this against to the, uh, to the bottom panel here, just so it's kind of in place. Uh, we have our power and ground right here. And then this wire up here is the one that is gonna be going to our tack. Well, I guess our speedo on the dash. I took the T-tops off, you know, might as well take advantage of the light. Then you guys can see here, I uh, went ahead and drilled a hole and put a little rubber grommet so that way we can go ahead and feed our wires down uh, through into our sensor. So uh, that should work pretty well. Obviously we gave it a little paint so we're not gonna go ahead and rust. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just rip out this gauge cluster so we can get to the speedo wire. So here we have our wire routed along with the e-brake line and we're gonna do it in a way obviously that it doesn't get yanked on. If I were to do this again, I probably would have just ran the wires inside the cabin so when we go ahead and re, re, rebuild the car essentially, um, I'm probably just gonna go ahead and rewire this unless it's, I don't know, maybe, maybe I really don't need to but you know, because it obviously goes into the into the car from up here at the at the floor pan in the trunk. We have two orange and two blacks, so I'm assuming we have you know signal and ground. So we'll go ahead and tap into one orange and one black, and we should be good to go, man. All right, guys. Well, man, it has been a mission getting this thing working, but we have we have finally got to the point where I have something coming to my damn gauge. So let me let me catch you guys back up with what the hell has been going on. So first off, it's been it's been like two days since I last filmed anything. And yesterday I spent all day messing with this. And a good portion of today, but finally. So first off, I was literally messing with it, messing with it, could not get an input signal from the actual sensor at the diff. 
Turns out the sensor was bad. Like after four hours of messing with it, I'm like, I finally realized that the sensor was bad. So I switched them and then I started getting an input signal at the actual box. So I was talking with a lot of the, uh, the Z community, the Z32, like 2JZ swap community, because obviously, you know, you, I figured they probably go, went ahead and did something the same and they did. However, they did not have the same exact box as I did. They have the SGI5 and I have like this 100 BT box. You no, know, they were saying that they're running off output five and that's the only thing that's working out for them. So I was on output five, output five, and I could not get a damn reading. Like I couldn't get it to work. Then this morning after just failing completely last night, I called to go to digital, uh, spoke to one technician, couldn't help me out. Left the voicemail for another. He called me back, talked to him, couldn't figure it out. And I honestly have no idea what has changed because here's what I've done since then. I, well, okay, well, first off, I messed with, like, every single setting in the app. They have, like, this Bluetooth app that has, like, a bunch of setup settings, and, man, I was just on that thing messing around for a good couple hours just reading this manual, guys. There's a, so much of just random, like, terminology, and, you know, I'm sure this makes sense to some of you guys out there, but me, at the moment, I've never messed with one of these before, so, wow. Learning experience, that's for damn sure. So, um, as far as everything, why, like, wiring-wise, let me, let me show you guys how I did it and where you're gonna go ahead and tap in if you guys do have a Z32. Okay, so we have up top, starting for the far right on your guys' screen, we have the ignition. That's just a 12 volt switched power source. I have that going to my cigarette lighter, I think I mentioned that. The ground, that's just going to the chassis, a nice chassis ground. Speed positive is not being used for my application. Input is actually the uh, the signal wire, wire from the, the, the sensor on the diff. The sensor, if I, I haven't mentioned, is uh, the two wire sensor that is located on the ABS uh, well it's, it's part of the ABS system I technically I can't really run ABS the way we have this set up right now and it's okay I'm not really too worried about that then we have all our output for me currently I'm I'm rocking output one output one is the only thing that I'm getting a readout from and it seems to be working out pretty well so uh, I have I still have some adjusting to do but let me let me show you guys the deal here actually first off let me show you and for Z32 guys just really quick you're gonna be going ahead and using this blue wire on this white connector on the back of your cluster. It is a solid blue wire. I just went ahead and, you know, made my little pinhole, fed it through, twisted around, just gonna go ahead and tape it. Turns out this yellow wire was not the wire. Now, if you guys do not wanna go ahead and remove your, your cluster and wire it up, you can also come in to hear your passenger foot well. And if you look, I stripped the wire so you guys can kinda see it. It's, um, oh goodness gracious man uh it's the little tan plug right there little brown plug and it's that blue wire that you guys can hopefully see that it's stripped but you can also tap into that as well and uh it's the same wire you know it's they kind of connect with each other so you can also do that if you do not want to take apart your cluster now as far as the sensors on the diff you do want to make sure you have them wired properly it does matter the orange wire has to be going to the signal in or also the input and the ground has to go to the speed negative port if you guys are running this box so um yeah i, I this box does work I, at first i thought it was kind of a, a dud but she does work man she does work so i think about that about covers it and like i said if i'm if i were to do this again and i will probably re rewire a lot of this vehicle once i tear apart this whole thing down and redo it again which will be coming up pretty damn soon once the 240 and the skyline are pretty much finished this will go down under the knife gonna go ahead and put all this stuff back together and then we'll go ahead for a drive and try and cal calibrate this thing So we are out on the streets. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try and calibrate this thing. So, oh God, oh, uh, that's right, I never put this back in. Okay, well. So to calibrate this, I believe, hopefully you guys can see, we have to press both of these two at the same time. And it's gonna say set speed, okay? And then, uh, there we go. You're gonna say set and then now, now basically we're gonna go ahead and pull up a GPS on our phone. I kind of got it generally to where it needs to be on the lift, like a rough estimate. Um, but now we're gonna go ahead and fine tune that value. So we got 50 miles an hour. Let's try and match that on the gauge now. So I'm going up in the values. You know, the tricky part because this isn't flat is keeping a steady speed here. Dude, that's perfect. <laughs> That's a pretty solid success. So if you guys are curious on my current output right now on my settings, I am at um, it's going to be uh, 0.417. The values I believe go from 0.250 all the way up to 4.0. 
So right now I'm at 0.417. All right, man, it feels so good to finally have a speedometer in this thing. If you guys are curious on like my settings on the actual app here, I have it on input, output is high, high. I don't know why that says zero right now, but this was the value that was at 0.417, what the hell, whatever we, we left it at. I mean, if you guys have any more questions, feel free to drop them down below. I honestly do wish I kind of got my coolant gauge working on the dash, the factory coolant gauge, just while I was back there, but I guess that's a that's a job for another day. I'll have the link down below in the description for the box that I used if you guys are interested. And uh, just like that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace out, guys. Be safe.